Okay guys, I've got a real treat for you today. It's the Hornby Princess Coronation Class Era 5 City of Salford. Coming up. Okay guys, so I've got the um, Coronation Class here and um, I'm going to unpackage it for you. But just before I do, I'd like to show you the back. It's got the diagrams there, as you can see. It's made in 2016, that's the original designs. And it's just got a bit of history there. And it's the 8P. So, um, it's the DCC ready, it's the late BR Princess Coronation 462 City of Salford. So I'm going to open it. Yeah, trying not to destroy it. Oh, it's a sheath, isn't it? Here we go. I still haven't seen it. Whoop, there's a receipt. Perfect. Wow, look at that. Now, let me slide this out. I'm not really sure how I'm going to achieve this. I think you just... Oh, that, that scares me. Goodness. Okay. And we have a little bit of information here. Let's read it. So this is just some information on um, user guide, fitting the um, extra details. We've got lubrication. Um, fitting a DCC decoder, taking off the body and the NEM couplings. Okay, and then let me see if I can figure out. Ah, we're in another plastic sheath. I really like their packaging. There goes the plastic sheath. And here we've got a little detail bag. I can see some brake rods, some vacuum hoses, some other little things, and a spare wheel set. That, that's good, I suppose. I hope the wheels don't break on it. And then here, as we take this off, we can see oh, the locomotive. Look at that. I can see there, she's the 46257, City of Salford. Let me just take all of the foam out. Goodness, how are you meant to get that out? She's very nice. So I can see here there's, there's heaps of separately fitted details just from looking at it. Um, but I'll show you that in a second. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm back and I've got the um, locomotive up a bit closer for you guys to see. And I'm just going to run over some of the detail. So first off, we look at this beautiful livery and we can see the um, nice yellow lining. You can see that goes over the locomotive here, around the um, numbers, around the tender down here on the piston, you know, and over the wheels. Um, we can see that we have separately fitted handrails here. We have a separately fitted handrail on the top of the um, smoke box door and a separately fitted smoke box dart. Also above that is the running number, which is 46257. As you can see, we have fabulous sprung buffers and um, just a little bit of molded detail on the front here with some lamp irons. Okay, and up the front here, we can see we've got some, um, if I bring it a little closer, you might be able to see there's some separately fitted hoses here and some valves there. Um, we've got the reversing rod just here. Um, the nameplate here, City of Salford, I don't believe that etched. That's etched, but it is beautifully printed. Um, we've just got some molded detail on this plastic little hose up here. Um, we've got a little um, 
safety plate there and also an identical one here um and as you can see you can see some hoses under the locomotive um fabulous little um coupling rods here and um back on the tender you can see we have some coal and i believe that is removable it is quite fine i'm not so sure about that i don't believe it looks entirely realistic um, you can see the yellow caps on the edges of the wheels and um, you will see that on this example the um, axles have been covered which is a really great feature um, also on the top you'll be able to see we have a separately fitted metal whistle um, and separately fitted metal safety valves we also have the awesome feature of a um, movable door at the top of the cabin so you can um, move that as you please right now just turn it around um, so you can see the other side there's not too much difference I don't believe um, but I will now I've turned it around take it off these rails and you will be able to see if I hold it up um, that there is a whole bunch of separately fitted detail in that cab. I believe it's separately fitted. Yes, it is. And um, as you can see, it's all been picked out in a very nice gold paint. Um, under the locomotive, we have um, just a normal set of wheels. I have noticed that the rear pony truck here does not have any flanges and actually doesn't move. So it's, um, it's stationary and those wheels just sort of fall backwards and forwards on the track. I have noticed that they fall down a little bit, so I'm not sure if that's going to cause any problems, but I don't believe it will. Um, as you can see, the rest is quite nice, though. There's plenty of separately fitted detail under here. Um, and, of course, the wires down here. There's a water scoop under our tender and NEM couplings on both the front and the back. Okay, guys, I'm back. And here I have the digital sound decoder, the TTS sound, um, the Hornby one. Uh, for the princess coronation class that I've purchased with the locomotive so I can run it on my layout with sound and um, I'm just going to open it up for you so I have already taken the top off this because I can't open packaging very well and this one's no exception and if I have a good go at pulling this out I should be able to get out the cardboard and first off I'm just going to grab out these bits of paper, just so I can show you. So this is the um, this is the little brochure that tells me what I've got. So as you can say, if I get into here, um, as you can see, sorry, I've got some different sheets of paper. As you can see, it, it's, it extends quite a lot. Um, and just here, we have all of the different sounds. So I'll just read off a few. Um, there's background steam, steam exhaust, um, whistle, uh, wheel slip, coal shoveling, cylinder cock, brake, blower, guards whistle, whistle, and blowdown, which are all um, different types. So there's, um, depending on locomotive direction, which will um, go when the locomotive changes direction, we've got um, various, which is just um whatever it decides we've got play once which is just one play and then that's it and it has loops until the loop until disable which is it constantly plays um we've got a cv table here and cv notes and on the other side we've got a little bit more um information stuff about how to do it um decoder plug and socket specifications stuff like that um and a bit of troubleshooting there um, it also appears to have the mixer chest section adjusting the Dakota's sound volumes via CVs. That'll be interesting to read about too. Okay, and now I'll show you guys the actual Dakota here. And as you can, oh, it's upside down. As you can see, we've got the um, Dakota there and then the little speaker up the top. And that, according to the diagram that came with the locomotive, should just go inside the tender. Here you can see a little picture of the speaker and how to plug it in. So um, that's good. 
Okay guys, so I'm back here and I've taken the packaging off the decoder and I'll just take it out of this packaging too and I'll show you what you get in the package. I'd also like to say that there's this little piece of paper here which is basically just some notes on how to install the decoder. Um, so I'll show you, here is the pins that will go into the plug on your locomotive. As you can see, we've got the normal decoder here and then we have the little TTS sound speaker and um, also a bracket to mount that onto your locomotive. So I might show a clip of me um, plugging that on or maybe just some pictures. Um, oh, and it also comes with a few little screws, but that's basically the locomotive. So next I'll show you the locomotive running after I've installed these, um, this decoder. And um, I'll also show you some of the sounds that this one can make. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the city of Salford down on the track and I have programmed it, and um, it's programmed to number 6,257, um, the same number as the last four digits of its running number, and that's how I program my locomotives here. Now, there may be a few difficulties as I run it out onto the main loop, as um, we haven't uh, fully set up the layout yet because we have just got it. But um, for now, I'm going to get it going, and you'll find that it has, I've actually got power to it right now, but it'll start slowly because um, one of the differences that you make, um, one of the differences you can make with the decoder is um, deceleration, acceleration weight. And I can see that that's already been changed um, out of the box. So I won't turn it up too much as I know there's going to be a few problems as it comes over these points that are still a bit iffy but it should go over them pretty well. So I'll just watch. I assume it's, um, it's cut out and that happens sometimes. Because as I said, some of these points are still a little bit iffy. There's a very unfortunate thing of pushing it a little bit. I'll set those points back and we're all good to go. Okay, now I am going to run this back to you um, so you can see it just up here. Um, and as you can see, it's starting its slow acceleration rate. Um, to come back here and I won't let it get going too fast because once it's going you won't stop it but um, so we'll just get it back here where you can see it and um, I'll show you right now um, um, straight out of the box so this hasn't been running so we can't make any judgments yet but I am going to show you the, um, the slowest crawl I can manage I believe that is it might not be Here we go. Okay. That's about as slow a crawl as I can. And that's at like 5% speed. And as you can see, that is going ever so slowly. If I knock it back a bit, I can actually... I can get it to go a little bit slower. And that that is just an excellent crawl. Like, look at... So yeah guys, that, that can do it pretty well. And um, so I'm gonna get it going now and we'll run it around at about 40% um, speed for 20 minutes. So I'll put a timer on now and we do 20 minutes both ways as running in time. And once that's run in, we'll be all good. And there it goes. Okay, so just an update, guys. Um, 
train has finished running in and as you can see I've also got the DCC sound working um, I have just put these wagons on they're the only ones I have with the similar couplings to this train um, so I'll have to buy some NEM they've got NEM couplings so I'll just have to buy some similar couplings um, to put on that um, but um, as you can see the rear pony just um, just there um, is not doing too horribly it is um, definitely not falling off the track like I thought it might and um, as you can see that isn't much of a challenge but it can I'm sure pull a lot more coaches than that um, and it is going very slowly at the moment one because it's just gone up a hill and it's got realistic DCC things that will um, make it go slowly up a hill but two because I have got it on a low speed um, some of the places where we've cut the, um, the board and then glued it back together are not particularly good yet and we need to fix those up so until then the locomotive will go pretty slowly but um, as you can hear she's got um, fully automatic, D automatic DCC sound and um, you'll see as it starts to not need the um, uh, steam going into the pistons and it'll turn that off and wheel slipping and um, lots of other things so it runs beautifully and I love listening to it run um, it has got a lot of other functions um, I can highly recommend the DC the TTS sound will be DCC to credit for the princess um, coronation class I reckon it sounds great um, I'm not sure if you can hear it on the um, video because I understand that I've uh, watched other videos with the TTS sound and listened and it sounded horrible and I've just slowed it down for this little joint just here but it is still coming around and I know it sometimes sounds bad on the video but I can say that it does sound really good in real life um, I'm very happy with it to be honest okay guys I've got the coronation class in the background there bit of a sneak peek I'll stop it so you don't see any more until the outro but I'd just like to talk to you guys about the um the DCC fitting of the um of the locomotive and I'd basically like to say that it is reasonably simple so to fit the um the TTS sound into this locomotive um means taking off the tender cover so the the body of the tender and then taking off the little filler plate that goes into the place where your pins will go in your DCC to coat it. Sounds a little bit iffy, but it, it's fine. It's actually really simple and it's pretty self-explanatory. You basically just take out the um, part that your decoder is going to plug into. You take out the, um, the weight and um, you can put your um, speaker... You can take the black covering off the back and then just shove your speaker in there with the speaker part facing down. Screw back on your um, your metal tender weight and then um, the plug for your um, DCC decoder. Plug your DCC decoder in, little bit of tape over the top to hold it all together and um, there you have it, it'll run just like mine. Um, you can take the tender off while in that process I can't recommend it. Um, the plug that they have used for it um, doesn't seem very um, robust. I feel like if you did it too many times, it would certainly pull some of the wires out. Um, minor problem. Um, other problems are there are quite a lot of separately fitted parts that haven't been added to the locomotive in the detail bag. Um, it's a bit of a shame um, the it doesn't it hasn't um, it hasn't got any of those installed because I was um, really struggling you'll actually see I've I tried to push in the coupling but I actually I couldn't push in this coupling which is um, really disappointing so um, I'm a little bit upset about the separately fitted details considering that I can't even put a coupling onto the front um, but that's okay now, on to pulling power. Um, it's on straight and level track, it could pull 20 coaches easy peasy. She's so powerful. Um, I find a big problem with wheel slip as it's coming up the hills on my layout. Um, there's one there and one there. Um, I understand those hills are exaggerated though, 
because my layout is completely on an angle after we've installed it. So we actually need to change those. It's partially our fault, but it can't pull my Roco Clean Van up that hill, which is not particularly pleasant. Like I, I'm a little disappointed by the pulling power, but that's okay. Um, I feel like if you had a better design layout, you'd have a bit more of a go at pulling some stuff. Um, it's still pulled, and let me count the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coaches. Um, not coaches, these little cars, these horny ones, I hate them. They have the worst couplings and they always derail. But it can pull eight of these very nicely. It, it does that with no struggle. Um, but obviously the Roco Clean, which does, it has a lot of drag if I show you, it does does like that's quite a push um so um and that just creates wheel slip so i feel like maybe the locomotive could have been a little bit heavier although it does feel to the hands pretty heavy um just not very good traction which is a byproduct of steel on steel really um that's not to say that you should put traction tires on it that's um that's a very good point but yeah all in all after running it for a good hour now i um i really enjoy the locomotive i can highly recommend you buy it and um after doing my research i found this locomotive and i reckon from the reviews that i can see from a youtuber called sam's trains i can highly recommend looking at his reviews um and from the Hornby website and other websites that have reviews, lots of different reviews and looking on the Hornby website and looking at all of their trains. And I'm pretty sure that's the, I'm gonna say the best train I can find. That, that was very good for me. Um, it is a new tool, that is um, a new tool. So the 2016 year um, was when it was originally redesigned and then it's had a new tool after that. Um, which is nice. It's, um, I think that tool's six months old now. So it's, it's a little old, but it's not bad. And, um, yeah, big fan of the locomotive. That is, by the way, uh, era five locomotive. So I know you can get them in era three and things like that. Um, and they're older. And of course, one of the ways you can recognize it is that it is a, it's the streamlined locomotive without the streamlining. So this, is my Fackman Sir Nigel Grazley. He's a bit old, he's a bit rusted, but um, he's still a goer. Um, similar to this, except with the rounded streamlining, and that's the Coronation class. Um, yeah, so, um, all good. Okay guys, so I thought I'd just read out this um, for you. So in case you wanted to install a Dakota like this, um, you can without having to read these instructions. I'll just read these to you. I'm not sure if this is going to be an extra clip at the end of the video or if I'll make a separate video for this, but um, it's really handy. And sorry, my dog's climbing all over me. Get down. Get down. Go away. Go on. All right. I'm apart. Anyway, um, so this is comes in the Dakota box. And it says, important, before you start, please read, please read these guide notes regarding fitting your TTS decoder. General installation note. The process involved in fitting any TTS decoder to any DCC ready locomotive is nearly the same as fitting any non-sound DCC decoder to a locomotive. In most cases, there will be a speaker mounting position already in place. Speaker mounting position, sorry. The TTS decoder in this pack may be fitted to any locomotive that can physically accommodate it. Please note the locomotive motor must not be drawn, must not draw more than 500 milliamps when continuously running. Since the original launch of TTS equipped locomotives, all locomotives in each locomotive series will be ready to accept any TTS decoder, e.g. any class 37 locomotive released after the initial TTS fitted class 37, R3289TTS, will be designed to accommodate a TTS decoder. However, some locomotives designed 
or launch pre the TTS period um, will possibly need some minor modifications when fitting the TTS decoder. See below for more information. Hornby Railroad steam locomotives may require some modification in order to accommodate a TTS decoder. The speaker and TTS decoder are usually mounted in the tender. Connections will need to be made from the TTS decoder in the tender to the electric motor, which is located in the locomotive body. In some cases, the tender weight may require some modification in order to accommodate the decoder. Hornby High Detailed Steam Locomotives These locomotives are generally equipped with a loco tender wiring harness and will usually accommodate a TTS decoder without any modification. However, in some cases, the tender weight may need to be modified in order to fit the speaker. Hornby Non-TTS Series Diesels Fitting a TTS decoder will possibly involve mechanical modifications to accommodate the speaker enclosure decoder installation. We recommend using a single layer of cello tape to insulate the decoder. This tape, type of tape allows good heat dissipation and is less bulky than the usual heat shrink type solutions. TTS decoder and speakers. The TTS decoder is supplied with a speaker connected. In some cases, there will be a speaker baffle box supplied with the kit. Other speakers. Some enthusiasts will want to use their own speaker arrangements. This is okay provided that the speaker used is rated at no less than 80 ohms in appendance at a power of one watt. When using a different speaker or if you need to extend the speaker wiring, please do not disconnect the wiring at the circuit board, always disconnect the wires at the speaker end and make sure your new connections to the free wires. Decode socket, decoder sockets. The TTS decoder is designed to be plugged directly into the standard 8 pin socket found in a DCC ready locomotive. Some locomotives have 21 pin connection arrangements. Please use a suitable adapter to adapt the 8 pin plug connection on the decoder to suit. No socket. If no socket is available on the locomotive to accommodate a DCC decoder, then the TTS decoder will need to be hardwired to the locomotive's wiring. This will require a de degree of electrical skill slash knowledge involving soldering. Also, some mechanical work may be required. It may be advised to consult a specialist DCC decoder fitting service. If you choose to carry out your own installation, much information much information and advice can be found on the DCC forums and other internet sources. In some cases, a degree of model making skill is required in order to fit the TTS decoder. If you require assistance after reading these notes, please consult your dealer for further advice or a decoder fitting service. Please note that any mo modification to the decoder will invalidate the war warranty.